In our previous video, we set up all of our manufacturing build materials and made sure all of our accounts were set up. Now we can begin the manufacturing process and look at all the journal entries that get created. So let's go into manufacturing. And what we'll do is create a new manufacturing order and we'll just create that manually here. So our product that we're going to produce is our manufactured product. And it's going to take two raw material one and two units of raw material two. Under our work order here, it's going to have operation one in work center one, which is going to take 60 minutes inside of our work center, which is going to take $100 per hour for our overhead cost and an average of $50 per hour for our employee cost. Now, before we begin, we can look at our overview here, which will give us the estimated cost in order to produce this good. We have our raw material one and two. We have the MO cost, which is $20 and $10. And what this comes from is two units times the purchase price based on our purchase price that we set on the vendor. So $10 each for raw material one and $5 each for raw material two. So we have a total of 20, 10, and $150 in our overhead account or our operations rather which is gonna consist of our overhead and labor combined. So the total unit cost should be $180 for our product. And if we unfold all of these, we can just see that our raw material, we don't have any, so we need to purchase it. And as a quick mention, inside of this overview screen, we can see the estimated arrival time based on the lead times. So the system will really tell us how soon or quickly we can produce this good based on the lead times of all of our raw material, as well as any other lead times that we have set in the system. Now that's not the purpose of this course, but I did wanna quickly mention that. Now we have an MO cost, and this is gonna give us $180. And right now the real cost says 150, and that's solely because we didn't set any cost on our raw material one and two. So those are currently zero, but based on the purchase price, um, the system has estimated it as $180. However, this real cost says 150 because the costs on raw material one and two are currently set to zero and they will be updated shortly. All right, so we have our MO. Let's go ahead and confirm that, which is going to generate a work order for us to begin working on this. But before we do that, we first need to purchase our raw material. So inside of purchasing, I'm going to create a new purchase order for vendor one and I'm going to add raw material one and raw material two. And we'll get 10 units of each for a few different examples. And we'll save, confirm this, receive our products in, validate the reception, and then we'll create a bill for these products and set a bill date and confirm this. And we've seen all of this before, so no need to go over it again. Now we have our raw material in stock and we can verify that in inventory valuation. We can see raw material one and two, and inside of our stock moves or our locations, we can see that we have raw material one and two in our main warehouse stock location, and we have 10 units of each. Now, one thing that I didn't mention previously is that depending on the steps needed in order to produce your good, there might be extra steps, but they don't necessarily have any accounting implications. So right now we're producing our good in one step, which means that we're gonna pull the material directly from our warehouse stock and push it into the production location. However, you can have multiple steps and that's more of an inventory configuration and under configurations here in warehouses, if I went to my warehouse, we can see manufacture is set to one step as opposed to having a picking operation first and then manufacturing the product or having a picking manufacturing or picking components, manufacturing, and then storing these products. All this does is create different uh, receipts or transfers in the system to move them across different operation types and different locations within our warehouse for better tracking. However, we're just gonna do it in one step as the journal entries are going to be the same. So now we have our raw material. Let's go to the manufacturing and we can take a look at our manufacturing order. Again, if we wanted to look at this overview, we can see our, our overview, we see our total unit cost is now 180 for the MO cost and our real cost is 180 um, based on us updating those products. 
because before they were zero, but now because we have average costs and automated inventory valuation, our cost price has updated automatically. All right, so let's begin working on our product. Let's just go ahead and plan this. And now we have a work order ready to produce. So we can do this from the shop floor application. So let's do that. In our shop floor, I'm gonna select work center one, and we have this manufacturing order that we could get, begin working on. So I can click on our work center here, and we might have several different steps, but for this purpose, I'm, I'm signed in as myself, and I can start tracking time against our operation here. So if I just simply click this, it's going to start tracking the time that I'm working on this operation. And as this time goes by, the system is going to keep track of that in order to produce the real cost that it take or took rather in order to produce this good. Now we're going to manually adjust this in just a second, but I do want to show you that the cost will be calculated based on the actual time that it took to produce this good. So once I'm finished, I can either clock in or clock out of it or mark this as done. And this won't close the production, it will just mark it as done. We can close the production here, but we'll do that instead in the back end. So let's go ahead and mark this as done and close the production. Rather, let's just do it now. And then inside of manufacturing, if we go to our manufacturing orders, we can see that this is completed. And we had a real duration of 39 seconds. So of course, this is going to severely deviate from our planned costs. So let's go ahead and look at our overview. And now under the real cost, we see the real cost and or the MO cost to produce this good, which was $31.90. It took $30 of raw material, which didn't change, and $1.90 of our operation and our work center. Now here we see the unit cost for Kevin Zaki was $75 an hour, even though that even though our work center average cost was $50 an hour because it took the real cost that I have set on my employee profile. So 81 cents. And then our $100 for our work center overhead, we see here our operations was totaled to 108, which gives us our total, which is slightly rounded. So there's gonna be a slight rounding here. This is gonna be 108 and this is 81 cents, but based on the rounding, it's gonna round up to 190. And because uh, these decimal places probably have or the division here probably has a couple of extra lines that might have been rounded down or up, and the total sum is going to be rounded up to the nearest cent. So here we have $1.90 for our operations and $30 for our components. Okay, so we produced our good. What kind of journal entries were created? So we can see our product moves and our evaluation. In our evaluation, what we want to look at is first our raw material and raw material uh, raw material one and two, they both get moved into our production location. And as a result, they come out of our stock valuation. So we can look at this. Let's go to raw material one. The first thing that happens is we credit our stock valuation to decrease our stock valuation. And we debit our cost of production account to increase our cost of production, which is an asset account. Now we have $20 of value in our cost of production account. The same thing is true for raw material two. So now we have a total of 20 plus $10 in our cost of production account. And that is based on that production location. So $30 came in, but when we finished our good and producing our good, it resulted in $31.90 .90 worth of value. So if we click on this here, we see our cost of production is now credited to, to remove 31 and 90 cents out of our cost of production and move it into our stock valuation as an asset. So the remaining balance, $1.90, is going to sit in our cost of production account. Now that cost of production account is going to be the total sum of our overhead and our labor costs for producing our goods. Okay, so let's look at that on the balance sheet. So if we go into our accounting app now and we go to reporting balance sheet, 
we see that cost of production account has a dollar ninety left in it. Now, what do we do? What do we do with that, right? So here is where I set the general um, disclaimer, saying that depending on the way your business operates, you may handle this differently. Now, typically. This can either be an asset account, but it can also be an expense account that you might utilize. Now, traditionally speaking, accurately understanding your overhead and labor costs is a very tricky problem to solve. It's a lot of data and you just want to get it as accurate as possible. Now, the system is calculating this based on our manual inputs of our employee costs, as well as our manually inputted operation costs. But at the end of the day, those, those costs are going to be realized in our profit and loss statement as salary expenses, repairs to our machinery, um, just general electricity bill, overhead bill, operation costs for that work center. So there's a lot of different variations or rather variables associated with the cost of production. And this is what got moved into our asset. So what we need to do for now is move this out of our cost of production account. Right? We need to offset it based on the expenses that were incurred. So some payroll might come in or our electricity bill might come in. And we want to say that that value or that expense was not necessarily an expense. It was actually used to produce a finished good. And that finished good is an asset that we hold on our balance sheet. So what we need to do now is create a manual journal entry to move the cost of production and offset some of our salary expenses or overhead costs. Now, the way you do that is totally up to you. Some businesses will just have a overhead absorption account or a production absorption account, which just holds generally the offsetting balance for our expenses. And we're gonna display that on our profit and loss statement, which is why I said this could have been an expense account and we're just gonna view it on our profit and loss statement and we'll see it as a negative balance on our expenses, which will offset some of our salary expenses as well as some of our um, general expenses such as electricity or things like that. So here, if we wanted to, and we just wanted to have an absorption account, we can just create a new chart of account or new GL account rather. And what we'll do is go into configurations, chart of accounts, and we can create a new account. However, I've already created one. So we'll scroll down and we'll look at the account that I created. We have a manufacturing absorption account, and this is just going to offset our different uh, expenses associated with the manufacturing process. So we're going to create a manual journal entry that's going to debit our cost of production account and credit our manufacturing absorption account. So let's go ahead and do that. Under our journal entries, we'll create a new journal entry and we'll just, for simplicity, just add our accounts here. We'll do cost of production and we'll do our absorption account. And we're gonna debit $1.90 and credit $1.90 to our manufacturing absorption account. So let's just simply post this and let's take a look at what that looks like on our profit and loss statement as well as our balance sheet. So in our balance sheet, we cleared out our cost of production account. And this might have been done at the end of our period. So maybe at the end of the month or end of the quarter, whenever we deem necessary. And inside of our profit and loss statement, we have this catch all bucket, as we can you know, see here for manufacturing absorption, that's going to offset any of the costs associated with the manufacturing process. So again, that salaries, um, you know, your light bill or any other overhead repairs that might have went into keeping that manufacturing process up and running. Now, this is one way of doing it, right? And this is where I said that many people have different viewpoints of how to accomplish this. The other way to do this is to have or directly debit our cost of production account and credit our expense accounts that are directly related to the different expenses that we incurred. So we can certainly do that. So why don't we take a look at what that might look like? So I'm gonna go into accounting, I'm gonna look at my journal entries once again, and I'm gonna look at the one that we just created. And I'm actually gonna reset this to draft and just cancel this entry. So now we still have $1.90 left in our cost of production account. 
and we're going to do something else with it. So let's say, for example, we haven't went over this yet, but for simplicity, we'll do that right now. Um, I'm going to create a new transaction in our bank account, and let's just pretend that some um, salary expenses came in. So I'm going to say that this was for payroll, and this was, let's say, a um, hundred dollar expense and we will just save and close that and I'll create one more and we'll just say that this was the light bill and this was might have been fifty dollars all right so we're gonna reconcile these two items manually again I know we didn't cover this yet so we don't have to pay too much attention I just want to make this as realistic as possible we're gonna select the account for our light bill and we'll just have a general expense account or we can create a new one. Let's actually create a new one and we'll just go to our chart of accounts, create a new 600 and we'll just call this 200 and we'll just say electric. And back at our reconciliation process under manual operations for our electric bill, or our light bill, we'll select our electric account and we'll validate this to reconcile it and our payroll will go into our salary expenses and we'll validate that as well. So now on our profit and loss statement, we have some expenses here. We have electric expense as well as salary expenses. Now we have that $1.90 and we're gonna just assume that the full overhead cost was for electric and the full salary expenses was, uh, or the full labor was for salary expenses. So the system keeps track of those values. So if we wanted to make this general entry more accurate, we certainly can do that. And in order to do that, what we're gonna do is, I will open up another tab. Oops. So we have two tabs open. In one tab, I'm gonna to go to our manufacturing process. I'm gonna to go to our production analysis report, and I'm gonna to go to pivot table, and I'm gonna remove all of these because we just care about certain items. So I wanna look at my total employee costs and my total operation costs. And at the top of our screen, we can filter this down by the period that we're working in. So this might be for a particular period, maybe we're doing it for January, or maybe we're doing it for a whole quarter, we can select that to get our totals here. Now with these totals, we'll make our manual journal entry. Again, we have a $1.90 set in our account, however, because there are some rounding that's occurring, we're going to have to make up for that penny, which is totally fine. We'll create a new manual journal entry, and this time we're going to debit our cost of production account. That's gonna be the same $1.90, and we're gonna credit our salary expenses, and we're gonna also credit our electric account. So we're gonna take the values, from our other tab here, and we're gonna see our total employee cost is 81 cents. So here are salary expenses. We'll do, let's just do 82 to make up for that penny difference. And then we'll do a dollar eight for our operation costs. So here we're gonna do a dollar eight. And now we have a balanced journal entry. We can post this. And now under our balance sheet, we're gonna see that our cost of production account is zeroed out. And inside of our profit and loss statement, we have offsetting values for our salary expenses as well as our electric bill. So that is everything you need to know about accounting in manufacturing. Uh, there are some other more specific videos that we'll have following this video for variances and things like that. Um, and that's particularly interesting when we're talking about standard costs, but for average costs and first in first out and automated inventory valuation, these are the general principles that you need to follow and be aware of. And again, as a disclaimer for the 10th time, depending on how you operate your business, you might do this slightly different, which is totally fine. I just wanted to show you some different options and how you can get the values that you need in order to accurately display your manufacturing accounting in your financial reports.